If you're looking for a cheap yet effective way of doing water changes both easily and quickly, look no further, you found your video. If you've been following me on this channel for a while, you may have seen my water changing setup, especially in recent builds. I've received many questions on this setup, so I figured I'd dedicate a full video around it. I am a firm believer that convenience plays a very important role in longevity within this hobby. Why make things harder than they have to be, especially when it only costs a few extra dollars? Streamlining mundane tasks such as water changes may not only save you time, but it may also decrease the likelihood of you skimping out on your water changes altogether. Note, this video is not sponsored at all. I paid my own money for every single item that you're about to see. And frankly, I was just trying to find a cheaper alternative to the Python water changer that everyone in the hobby uses. First, let's dive into each individual item that I use within this setup. Everything I'll talk about will be linked down in the description, even the Python water changing kit if you are also considering that. No pressure at all to use those links, but if you want to support the channel, they do help out tremendously. The bread and butter of my setup consists of pieces from the Higer water changing kit. There are a few things included in the kit, but I'll speak first to the things that are used in my specific setup. The first thing I use is the faucet attachment. This thing is a lifesaver if you want to stop carrying five gallon tanks back and forth between your tank and your bathroom faucet or wherever you get your water. This hinge right here allows you to change between actually adding water into the tank versus pulling water out of the tank and into the drain. Since this is an honest review, there are some flaws that I'd like to pick out. One thing is that this valve has gotten a bit loose over time. Even when I have it fully shut off so that water can go directly from the faucet to my tank, it still drips out water and leaks a little bit down this spout. Another issue that I've had is whenever I do attach a tube to this nozzle and screw it in, even though the screwing mechanism is tight to an extent, this still gets loosened. The workaround I have is essentially just cutting the tube every once in a while so that you get a non-stretched end. The last issue I have with this is this is the part that you attach to the actual faucet. So the kit itself comes with a few adapters, but unfortunately none of the adapters that come with this kit are compatible with my specific sink. I do have a solution for that later in the video though. So that really isn't an issue, but I figured I'd point it out. The next thing that I use in this kit is the tubing. This is the tubing that comes with the kit. And you may be wondering, what what is so great about this tubing? You can't really mess up tubing, right? Wrong. This tubing is actually amazing because it is very flexible and it is very hard to kink. And two, it keeps its shape and form relatively easily. A bad example would be this kind of tubing. So this tubing I found from Home Depot. As you could see here, it is barely a circular shape. On top of that, it's very rigid. With it being rigid, it easily kinks as well. So yes, not all tubing is equal. The one that the Higer kit comes with is grade A. The great thing about this kit is that you could get it with various lengths of tubing depending on your specific case. In addition to those two items, you also do get this behemoth of a siphon, which is basically useless in my case because I do not own any tanks that would constitute having this girthy object in my life. In addition to the siphon, it also comes with a nozzle. Again, useless for my needs, but it may be useful for you. And lastly, it comes with a valve that can be used on this side of the kit. Overall, this thing, I don't really get much mileage out of it. I just use the other two items. Now on to the other item. Remember how I said this, in addition to the adapters that come with this thing are not compatible with my specific faucet. Well, I did some digging and I was able to find a one size fits all solution for basically any faucet out there. And that solution is the Water Bandit. So as you can see, I already took it out of the packaging because I use it, got this right off of Amazon. I'll link it down below, but this thing has been a godsend. As you can see, it is a rubber adapter that essentially can accommodate any faucet size as long as you could fit it over it. Since it's just a matter of putting it over the faucet, you no longer have to consider any bushing sizes or any specific sizes that fit on your specific faucet. This thing essentially screws onto here and yes, they are compatible. I believe this is the standard thread size for hoses or something like that. Just know it fits. You don't have to do the research, I already did it for you. You hook this up into the faucet. This essentially creates a watertight seal just through the stretchiness of the rubber. But wait, there's more. There is still room for improvement to make this better. The third item is this specific easy clamp. I already opened it, but I put them back in here for better effect. Anyway, to add that extra oomph to that watertight seal, 
These clamps come in very handy so that there is no risk of this popping off of your faucet whenever you're doing a water change. So again, I'll take this off momentarily. You take your easy clamp. I highly recommend these because they have the handle where you're able to hand tighten them. Take the clamp, put it through your water bandit, and then screw your water bandit into the faucet attachment. Now with this setup, you put the water bandit over your faucet and you have an easy clamp to increase that tightening force so that it is a fully sealed attachment. So with this setup, you now attach your hose. And yes, I do realize I'm using the bad hose on this end. I ended up actually having to extend the tubing because I didn't do my measurements correctly. Don't be like me, make sure you measure correctly before you purchase your Hyger water changing kit and make sure you get the accurate length of tubing. For demonstration purposes, this is one side of my setup. And now we're gonna move on to the setup that actually hooks into the tank. So the thing that actually hooks into the tank is this bad boy. This does come in a kit, but you're gonna wanna get the kit because there is another item that you're gonna need. If this was the tank wall, you just hook it in there. There is benefit of using something that actually physically hooks onto the tank while you're doing water changes, as opposed to relying on clamps because clamps fail. Anyways, I'll link down the kit below. It is made by Penplac. If you guys have seen the J-Hook made by Python, this essentially is a poor man's version of it. But I honestly prefer this one because it suits my needs better. So in addition to using this for my setup, I also use the strainer that comes with the kit. It's kind of janky how I attach this to this, but no issues yet, so I'm going with it. So you just put this over here. Honestly, I just rely on a bit of friction force. Don't push it too hard in because you may start splitting the plastic. Mine is splitting, but honestly, it's not that much of an issue. This strainer is important, especially if you don't want to suck up fish when you're doing your water changes. But if you're like me and you have guppies, specifically baby guppies, which are essentially a millimeter in width, this definitely does not suffice because they can still get soaked through. In comes the last and final item to my setup, and that is a pre-filter sponge. This is the same exact pre-filter sponge that I've recommended on this channel time and time and again. It happened to be a perfect fit for this strainer. I did end up using a rubber band just for added security. Essentially, you take your strainer and you wedge the sponge accordingly. Now you have a strainer that is safe even for baby guppies. With that, the last and final thing you need to do is grab your tubing. In this case, we are actually using the tubing that came from the Hyger water changing kit. You take this end right here and you simply shove it up the hole. But as you can see, I'm completely relying on friction. It may seem sketchy at first. Honestly, I've been using this setup for well over half a year now and I've never had issues of this popping down or this leaking at all. Try at your own risk, but again, I haven't had any issues. And that is the full setup. This is what attaches to the faucet and this is what hooks into the tank. So this is awkward. I checked out the pen plaques and it is actually out of stock. As you can see here, they have no idea when it's gonna be back in stock. Being the self-proclaimed resourceful person I am, I dug around my supplies and I found a plan B. This is the nozzle that's actually used for aqua clears. As you guys know, aqua clears are a hang on back filter that's used throughout the hobby. But here you could repurpose the intake and use it for the means of this water changing kit. You could buy these pieces separately on Amazon, which I'll link down in the description. And Fluval being the big company that they are, I'm sure that these won't be out of stock like the pen plaques. So what I do here is I take the intake, I also take the extender, and I use the pen plaque strainer. That you could buy separately on Amazon and that is still in stock, which is why I'm continuing to use it for this kit. Next, similar to what I do with the Penplax intake, I take the Hyger tubing and essentially wiggle it into one end of the tube. As always, everything will be linked down in the description. I will also link the out of stock Penplax listing just in case they put that back in stock. All right, back to the video. Now that you know my full setup, how I assemble it and what items it consists of, let's deep dive into the pros and cons that I've been able to accumulate through usage of this specific kit for six months. Pro number one is that you no longer have to lug five gallon buckets of water to and from your faucet. Pro number two is that this is quick and efficient in not only siphoning water out of your tank, but also adding water into your tank. Pro number three is the water bandit. Regardless of whether or not I was gonna use this kit or the Python water changing kit, finding something compatible to my faucet was always an issue. And of course, there are plenty of adapters out there. I personally, before I even heard about the water bandit kit, took my faucet head 
to Home Depot and I tried to figure out what would work and what wouldn't. After about 30 minutes of asking employees and looking around, I still had no luck. The benefit of using the Water Bandit is that this essentially finds a one size fits all solution. Now onto the cons. One which is very minor is that I just honestly don't know how to effectively store this correctly because I have so much hose. but. This problem isn't unique to my specific kit, but other than that, I cannot really think of any other cons when it comes to this setup. Overall, having this setup has been an absolute game changer. Highly recommend you guys try it out. I did all the research to figure out what fits, what doesn't, so you probably will have a high chance of success with this kit. Again, everything will be linked down below if you want to support this channel. If this video brought any value to you, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok, check out pharmaquatics.com. And as always, I shall see you guys in the next one. Peace.